Hello, good morning and welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. Out on another absolutely stunning morning on the boat. We have got beautiful conditions. I'm just playing with the dolphins at the moment. Yeah, my plan is, right now, is there's a bit of ground that I've been looking at for a while. And I'm going to go and fish it at anchor today. There's a couple of little marks I'm going to fish at anchor. My first, first order of the day though is to try and find some bait. I was hoping that the dolphins and the birds were going to show me where the bait was this morning, but they seem to just be milling around the place. So I'm imagining all the mackerel and all the pilchards are quite spread out. I'm going to have to do a little bit of searching around to find the bait. Once I've caught half a dozen to ten mackerel, we'll make our way to the area and get a day's fishing in. That's enough messing around, let's go and find some bait. Well, that's a start. Another couple more. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, I'm going to record what the screen's showing me, so you can see what I can see. The cloud all over the seabed between 20 and 15 metres is all fish. You can see them leave the shoal to come up and attack Masabikis. <laughs> well, I think we've got enough bait. Let's go. Yeah, right, lads. I've been drawn by a couple of dolphins. Yeah, I'm on the way to where I wanted to go. And I've seen a little bit of rock that I thought, I'll tell you what, I'll have a drop on that and see what I can find. It's quite deep though. We'll have a look. We'll have a look. I don't know if you can hear them dolphins. I can hear them squeaking. A little baby with him. Oh, we've not got very much drift. I can maybe get down there with a little tiny jig. This is it. It's, it's just all about figuring it out. It's about getting, getting out there and having a look and having a try. And then, depending on what the conditions are doing, working out what's going on. Just a little rust to start with. <laughs> and a carbon copy of the first one. Now if all they are down there is little tiny rust, I'm not going to waste any more time on this. This little bit of rock. We'll get where we're going. We have arrived to the area where I'm going to fish today and I don't quite yet know what the tide and what everything's going to be doing so I'm going to have a couple of drifts with a float with a live bait on and flick a lure around at the same time while I figure out what the hell I'm going to do. There's no point sticking the anchor down straight away, we're, we're just on the start of the turn of the tide. So that means that the tide is quite slack at the moment and then it's going to start running. Now I want the tide to start running before I put the anchor down. Mainly so I know which way it's going to go. Best to give it a few minutes. Well, it's a few minutes, I'll give it half an hour. Give it half an hour of drifting around to figure out where we're going to go. Check the drag, a bit light. Better. And then I'll talk you through putting the anchor down and then the rigs that we're going to be using fishing on the bottom. Keep an eye on that float for me. Fish, got you. Feels, oh, feels rusty. 
No, and he's off. Popped him off. That's no drama. Ideally today, hopefully, fingers crossed, what I'm going to be targeting is codlings and bullhus. Maybe a bream. If it's uh, if we're very very lucky, yeah, we'll just see. Not fish this area in a while. The conditions are lending itself. Oh, that's a fish. Conditions are lending themselves to fishing at anchor today. Ooh. What we got here? Little pollock or balanrass? Little pollock. <laughs> I'll go back for a bigger one. Yeah, the reason why you don't want to put your anchor down too soon when it's like this is because you don't know on this reef which way the tide's going to go. You want to let the tide get properly running so you know where to put your anchor down. Give it half an hour. We are we're really slack at the minute. We're drifting it. 0.2 knots. Well, you can see how far that that floats drifting away from us. Yeah. Give the tide a chance to start pushing. There's a fish. A little ballon ras. Tell you what, he's got some lovely. Lovely colours on his tail. There you go, lad. Tide's started to move a bit now. What I'll do is I'll, I'll get all the anchor prepped, get all my gear ready, and I'll talk to you just before I put the hook down. The spot where I'm wanting to fish, I'm wanting it to be a bit of mixed ground. Like, a bit of rock, a bit of sand, just as kind of like sand meets reef. That's that's what I'm hoping for. Now, the area where I'm anchoring now, I've never anchored here before, so I don't quite know how it's going to go. But because there's a chance of rock being down there, I'm going to be using a grapple anchor. That's one of these. Now, I have got it rigged with a weak link, so if it does get stuck, it does trip out. And I've got about 15 feet of chain. I don't use as much chain when I'm fishing in the rocks as I do when I'm on the sand or the mud just because the chain can get jammed in the rocks. Yeah, and all I'll be doing is I'll just be running out a rope and using an Alderney ring and a buoy to hold the anchor. It'll be easy to explain that when I'm hauling it. There's no point me putting the anchor down and fishing into just a load of snaggy, jagged rocks because I'm just going to end up losing gear. I want to be just as the reef meets the rock. Sorry, the, the sun meets the reef. That'll do. Right. This is how I anchor up like this. You can see there, the anchor's bit. I've tied it off to the after cleat here. And then I've passed this rope over the top and tied it to the cleat up the front. Now, I'm anchored up in relatively small tides. It's no danger of me pulling the boat under. If you're going to be doing this in really strong tides, I would do it all out the front. Because effectively now I'm anchored back to front. When I let this go, the boat's going to swing round. But yeah. It's safe enough to do in this situation with me on this boat because I like working in an open space so I'm not cramped through that little hatch and I know that these tides aren't that big, I can do it safely. If you're going to do this somewhere like in the Bristol Channel or the Solent where you get like four knots of tide, I wouldn't be anchoring in those tides anyway. <laughs> but yeah, it works for me and it works for this situation. I've sat back nicely at anchor now. We have got, <laughs> there is a still a little bit of tide in here actually. And I'm knocking up, I don't know when you can see that, this is a cart and squid bait. Cart is the inside of an edible brown crab, a female one. Yeah. A lovely scenty bait. And I'll be sending that down just on a running ledger rig. 
I'll finish knocking it all up and I'll send it down. I'm gonna fish a couple of rigs. I'm gonna fish some big smelly ones like this. I'm gonna fish a couple of mackerel baits. I'm gonna fish some little tiny strips of squid as well, just to see if there's any bream down there. Just mixing it up session to try and figure out what's on this reef. There you go. There you are. Just a very simple sliding ledger rig. This is what I'm meaning, we're, we're, we're laid with a run of the tide now. If I'd have put this anchor down too early, we would have swung round and hitched up and I would have lost gear and the anchor might have got fouled. And giving it that little bit of time for the tide to properly start moving. Saves you a lot of hassle. Well, I got it this time, but <laughs> I think that what I think this is a dogfish. Yeah, the really strong aggressive bites I was getting first died away. And what I've got now was just like the dogfish rattle of death. So yeah, the first fish to the boat at anchor is a dogfish. It's been sick as usual. Try and tea bar him off outside the boat. Not what I was wanting. That tide is really pushing on this part of the reef. I'm gonna have to move somewhere else. It is screaming through. I've moved to a slightly different area on the reef. I've only moved probably 200 yards, but yeah, we've <laughs> there's a lot less movement in the water here. The area where I was, it was a gully, and obviously the, the tide was just coursing through it. So I've knocked up a fresh bait, send it down. The uh, the cart we use, it's it's mainly just like ground bait. It's, it's all scent. It just um, yeah, it's the insides of a crab, and it's um, fish love it. I'm not going to say it'll be like an award-winning cologne, because yeah, it's pungent, but yeah, fish like it. I'm constantly exploring new areas, new bits of reef, new bits of ground, new wrecks. Not only because fish are constantly moving, you've got to, you've got to find them. You can't expect to just go out to the same places all the time and catch the same fish. So I'm constantly looking. And the only way to really know is by coming out there and trying it. Sometimes you'll get a mark and it'll be not very good. <laughs> and other times you might find one, it'll be, it will be good. But you've got to get out there and find them. This little bit of reef here, I am going to put a decent sized mackerel bait down. Because that bite that we had earlier, that was a decent huss. The way it was ragging and tugging. I think all it was was it pulled a piece of the bait off and was busy away chewing it. And then while it was busy away eating the piece that it had torn off, that dogfish come through. And if I put a bigger bait down, hopefully it'll dissuade, and dissuade the smaller fish from taking a hook and you'll catch a bigger one. Same rig again, just a sliding ledger, but this one has got a macro flapper on it. Stand up there for a second to see if you can see it. Right, so that can sit there. And this one here, I'm going to find out what's on the bottom of this. I think we have a conger eel that's found a hole. <laughs> that's frustrating. It's getting a lovely bite on that. Ah oh, well. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Put this down and I'll have a look at the smaller bait. <laughs> well, that one's nearly been pulled out of my hands. Which one, which one? Well, the big one seems to be the, the one that's the, 
it's the most pressing. <laughs> Couldn't decide which rod to pick up. A conger eel. Where's that one off? Well, let's find out what's on this one now. It was just about picking which rod was the most <laughs> the most likely to have the fish on. Getting bites on both rods at the same time. It's a shame if all we've got down there is a load of dogfish because I don't want to be sending carp bait down if I'm just going to be catching dogs on it. Not yet. Ah. Oh, they're just... <laughs> Well, that completely disproves what I was just saying, wasn't it? Oh, he's a really dark huss. Yeah. I think, well, <laughs> I can only speculate that the reason why he wasn't doing much is because he swallowed that hook. That hook is right down in, well, I can get it out, I can still see it. I just see it at the corner of his mouth there. Yeah. Really dark reef huss. Not usually see him with spots all over their bellies like that. You can tell he's come from right amongst the rocks by how dark he is. That rig. Just a very simple sliding ledger rig. Just put a fresh mackerel bait down on this rod here. Put the rod down, turn round to go make another bait up, turn round, the rod was just going and lifted into it, and there's not there. Unfortunately, when you've got a lot of little huss around in like an area, there's not much else that'll get in on the feed because they're really aggressive and they've got like abrasive skin. I've seen them before when I've been diving, they come in and they just push stuff out of the way. Got you. Got you that time. That'll be a big push, surely. Big old daddy huss. <laughs> that is a proper one, like. Yeah. Yeah, that's not a little one, that is a proper one, that one. That, if that was what was taking them baits before, that's why it was giving them real big bites. Go on, stop. Oh, look. There's a hook just in the corner of his mouth. You see all them teeth? They are just, well, he's, they're strong, but he's also just all aggression. You just sit down there for a second and calm down, lad. Yeah, that's what it was. Got it in the end. Where's my tape bar? There you go. What I was going to do was I was going to move down from a, from a big hook. To a slightly smaller one. Better. In order to get it, because it was being a bit fickle, I was going to move down from that size to that size. But you still need to steer with a strong line. I mean, this is 150, this is 100. The reason why you need that strong line 
it's clear to see when you look at this this shark's mouth here. Hey, look. Ah. Don't do it. They've got a habit of being sick. This guy, that, that gurgling you can hear is him. He's about to go and purge his stomach. Don't do it. Did it swallow it? Oh, no. Go on. <laughs> He's just lost about three pound. He's just spat up an entire ras. <laughs> yeah. This is a male. I'm going to drop him back now. You can see by them claspers there. This is this is a male, and he was he was about ten pound. Now he's about <laughs> eight and a half. There you go. When they're rasping round like that, you saw that I was trying to trying to control it as best I could. You don't let them rub up against your skin. He rubbed my wrist a little bit there. Their skin's just like backward facing little little spikes, like really really rough sandpaper. And all that rolling that he's doing was trying to rub me with his skin. See if I can't sit this rod up so you can see the bite. You gonna take it? Yeah, I think that one's got it. Managed to get yourself all snarled up in that one, haven't you? Who seem to have gone off the feed for a minute or two. Any look and they were just working their way through the reef. I get a chance of catching something else now. They're a good looking fish and they're fun to catch but not when you're targeting something else. <laughs> the good thing at least is it's um, I've never fished this area of reef before at anchor and I've caught fish <laughs> so it's not been a bust. There's some areas though where it only holds us. It just seems to be that once they've taken up residence in an area and they, they know they like it, they stay. Not much else goes in. Imagine it'd just be like living in an area with a load of wild dogs around you. I've just put a cart bait down on that rod down there and turned around to make up another hook length. And as soon as I look back, rod's going and lifted into it and it's just gone. Make up and pre-bait a couple of couple of other hook lengths. That was it. <laughs> that was a stonking bite. That was obviously like that fresh that fresh scent had come from that cart. Whatever was in the area had found it and just went straight in on it. Now it's back. It's an interesting bait. They've been using it up in the northeast for 20, 30 years. It's only really come down to the south coast in uh, in the last five to ten. Ah. Might be joined by the Ifka in a minute. Just as I'm getting a bite on the other road. Get it on, you alright? Yeah, alright. Bullos and dogfish. I'm trying for a codling. You seem good at catching them. Yeah. <laughs> Catch them in a pond. Yeah, I was after a codling, but no joy. <laughs> what about yourself? What are you after? Bass fisherman. Yeah, to be honest, I come out this morning and it's like I'm the only person out here. Are they all in? No. Try if I jump on. 
bring yourself around the, come around the other side. Yeah, good. Well, I was just going to say, we're <laughs> I'll get our friendly local Ifka. <laughs> Come back to you. We'll find out when everyone else does. Yeah. Not bad day for John, is it? Lovely. Not bad office to have, is it? <laughs> yeah, if you, Thanks, uh, if you need help in your shop. Yeah, no worries. Enjoy your day. Thank you. Don't you. No, you'll be telling anyone where I go fishing. <laughs> Right, let's get these baits refreshed. Yeah, all that was there is um, the local Ifka, the inshore boat for the inspection of the local Ifka. What they're doing most likely, they're out to make sure I haven't caught any bass because we are in a closed season for bass. Oh, it's an eel, it's found a hole. When I was talking of him there, we had a bite on it. Yeah, they were just making sure that I'd, I didn't have any any undersized lobsters, any bass, anything like that. But as I've caught now today, <laughs> it was a very quick inspection. I think actually that I might move spots because the bites have dried right up here. Let's get that anchor up. Weak link's broken out. Let's get this refastened, get anchored up somewhere else. There we are, spot number two. First spot, yeah, it fished all right. A couple of congas, loads of bullos, a couple of dogfish. I'm imagining that, that bit of ground, it felt like it was like small rocks because I, I kept like snagging and then lifting, I could feel lifting the rock away. There's a couple of snags in there because I did lose a conger eel to a hole. So yeah, um, I did have a camera on the seabed. If there's been anything worth seeing on it, I'll put it in here now. As suspected, this seabed is small rocks. There are some lovely soft corals. We call them dead man's fingers. Inquisitive cuckoo wrasse, strap eels and bullhus. In the background of this shot, you can actually see my rig and a conga take the bait before I reel it in. This big old eel has a good nose around. This made me laugh. The spider crab attacks the eel to get it out of the way. And this sandy coloured huss muscles in and pushes the conger eel out of the way. There's loads of them down there. Got some peck peck pecking bites on there. That might just be. This area of ground where we are now is a little bit rockier. A little bit more jagged. Might just be a load of little rust down there. There's one more spot on area um, more sand than here. I'm also been, look been looking at. 
Now if we completely kind of strike out on this mark, we'll go to that one as well. Aha. Female cuckoo wrasse. What I'm looking for with this, what I'm looking for with the scratching rig, is I'm looking for pouting. You can get some type of idea what big fish are going to be living in an area by what small fish are living in an area. Because obviously the big fish eat the small fish. If you get a lot of poor cod pouting and waiting, you've got a good chance of it holding bigger predatory fish. If there aren't any little fish, there aren't any little poor cod or gobies or blennies or little wrasse and things like that, you won't get any big ones. All I do, I look at it as like pieces of a puzzle. You need to have like all of these pieces to, for it to be a successful trip, for it to be a good mark. Like good ground, good water flow, uh, good bait sources, right depth, all that type of stuff. If you've got one of them missing, that's a problem. So like when I'm sat at home and it's poor weather and I'm looking at all the charts and I'm, I've got like a little checklist in my mind where I'm looking for new areas to go and try. I'll be looking for like a little bit of reef, a little bit of sand, thinking right well the tide will run around there, yeah. Like a puzzle. And all you're doing is you try to find the pieces for it. Can't wait to find out what's on that underwater camera. Might be now. <laughs> Might be now on that underwater camera. Yeah, I'm, I'm. It's always really exciting because I can't look at it now. I don't even know if it works. You just, I'll, I'll find out when I get home. This shallow patch of reef, as you can see, is pretty snaggy. Plenty of wrasse, a few pollock, soft corals, and short kelp. Find out when I get home how many fish were down there and how many, how many, how many, oh, that was a bite. How many fish I've missed. That was a monstrous bite, that one. This greedy sod, look, the hook, hook isn't even, no, look, hook wasn't even in his mouth. I have to get my sunglasses out. Started this morning, it was about two degrees. Now it's like t shirt weather. A little scrappy, strappy. making a nuisance of yourself, aren't you? Once again, not what I'm after. When they're about £40, I don't mind catching them. Three dogfish and a little tiny conger eel. I'll go and try that deeper mark now. There we go. We've got the anchor set down on the last mark. Yeah, this is slightly deeper. This is about eight meet eight meters, eight <laughs> eight meters, uh, eight eight meters deeper. And this is the edge of the sand as it comes up to the rock. So we're we're in like a little bit of a gully. What a fantastic little weather window this has been. <laughs> it's going to be horrible tomorrow. It was horrible yesterday, and it's going to be horrible tomorrow. But today, it's like a summer's day. I'm really glad of this, I'm really glad of this little weather window because I wasn't sure if I was going to get a chance to get out on the boat again. I've got a lot coming up over the next few weeks. Yeah, very, very busy next couple of weeks. One of the main things that I'm doing is I am, uh, I'm part of the boat show, the boat life show at the NEC in Birmingham again. Last year was the first year that I went to it. It was, uh, it was fantastic. 
I think we had about 14,000 people through the door last year. Yeah, this year's um, set to be a cracker. There's going to be all, all oh, I couldn't even name them all, all manner of boats. Everything from small boats like man, fishing boats, canal boats, speed boats, jet skis, trailers, all the engines to go with it. Um, all your electronics, It was. it's a massive boat show. Yeah, that's the Boat Life Show at the NEC in Birmingham. I'll put a link in the description of the video to it. I might even, if you're lucky, I'll see what I can do. I might even be able to angle like a, a discount code for your tickets. I'll ask them. If I've managed to get one, this will be in. If I haven't, <laughs> this won't even be in the video. I'll mention this. <laughs> I'll mention this because I found it quite funny. Hannah, I don't know. <laughs> I am quite spoiled in some respects. And it's, um, my wife makes me sandwiches for me. <laughs> it's like a little ritual that we have. Whenever I'm going to be going out on the boat, she makes my sandwiches for me the night before. And I don't know what must have happened last night. She must have been pissed off with me when she was making my sandwiches. <laughs> but it's a good job I brought some other snacks with me. I'll have to uh, I'll have to have a word with her. She forgot to put the filling in. <laughs> so I've just got buttered bread. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. <laughs> Whatever it is, I'm sorry. Probably don't even know I've done it. <laughs> mm. Buttered bread sandwiches. The seabed on the gully mark was as expected. A lot more sand. But very few fish. So I moved up further onto the reef. I think all I've had all day is just stacks of little eels and small bullets below the boat. Oh no. Little baby ballon. All I can do is apologise <laughs> for where the sun is. I'm never going to apologise for it being sunny. But I will apologise for where the sun is. Got ya! Oh no, that is a big one. That's a big hush, that. Oh, and it's just spat it. Oh, you little... What had happened there was it that was a really big bullus. That was a bigger than the one we had earlier. That was a like a 12 pounder. And it's come up and just as it come to the surface, it swirled round and went round one of the other lines. So <laughs> it meant that I couldn't pull it up. And as it pulled into the other line, it created slack and it's just let the hook come out. Well, I've got hold of it. Nowhere near as big as the last one, but I got hold of it. The last one could have eaten this one. <laughs> right. The sun's not in the best spot. <laughs> I'm going to fish these last two baits out and then we'll wrap up. Well, if nothing else, I would like to hope that the camera that's on the seabed will have got some good footage. If it has, I'll put it in here now. This deeper patch of reef has a lot more life on it. Taller kelp giving more cover and a bit more tide. Plenty of pollock and wrasse. And again, some meaty conger eels. Mm. 
Now this is something I talked about earlier. Bullos are that aggressive. You see this small fish bully the much larger conger eel out of the way. Oh. Look how fat its gut is, it's probably full of my baits. <laughs> right, got ya. I can do something with you now. There you go. Well, that is it. We have got about 45 minutes of daylight left. Brought the lines in, tied it down. I'm gonna pull the anchor up and I'm gonna start it in back. Uh, I've enjoyed trying out these new marks today. Didn't catch any codlings, but <laughs> yeah, it was a slim to nil, slim to nil chances. It was. Had some nice fish. Had some nice pullers. I hope the underwater cameras have shown some decent. Um, yes, if any of you manage to get to the Boat Life Show at the NEC in Birmingham, I look forward to speaking to you. In the meantime, all the very best. See you later. Let's go.